and will let the record reflect that all supervisors are present at roll call, with the exception of Supervisors Brady and Olive. Are either one of you on the conference call? Okay. Chris Brady's on the call. Chris Brady's on the call, so Brady is also present. Phil Olive, are you on the call? Hey, this is Alex Fowler. Um, I'm on the call. Okay, thanks, Alex. We'll catch you in a little bit. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Olive has just joined us as well, so all board members are present. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we'll start off with public comments. I'm going to start. We received an email from Mr. Hornick with regard to the memorial bricks. Um, he had several questions that he asked to be reviewed tonight. First one was, did the board approve the placement of memorial bricks next to the main cutting green? Yes, we did. That was back in, I believe, either September or October of 16. Are there rules for the memorial bricks? Yes, there are. And the minutes of the meeting, Chuck, you can find those online. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, no, actually, we purge after two years, and those are uh, four or five years old. Okay. So um, we can get the minutes for that we can get them to back. him. Okay, who is responsible for getting the bricks and who should we contact? Uh, Mr. Huff was the one that presented the request to the board back then and he has been the one um, purchasing and getting the bricks taken care of. Um, how much are the big engraved bricks? Um, the bricks are one cost, the engraving, and then there's a quarterly maintenance on the bricks. So um, he's working on a uh, total cost of maintaining the bricks and getting them. Um, can someone contribute to the Memorial Brick Fund? When this was first started, it was done through the 50-50 at the Men's League. Um, so that's how it has been and that's what was in the minutes. Um, the Women's League, they opted not to do a 50-50. They pay for it out of their treasury. Um, who is responsible for the placement of the bricks? Um, John Butnick, the superintendent, his staff does it. Um, and I do recall at that meeting that Chris Brady was asking how much that would entail and the time, and John said it was um, an easy do. So John's been doing that. Thank you, John. Um, will the board make exceptions for rules if someone wants to buy an engraved brick for a loved one? I have asked. I made a suggestion to the HOA that if someone lives in the community and is not a golfer, that maybe that they could do a walk of honor at the community center. Um, the bricks at the putting green are for the golfers in the men's and the women's league and the employees of the uh, maintenance staff and the pro shop staff who have passed. So those are, um, those are Mr. Hornick's answers. Um, does anyone else have, do I have any other um, resident comments? Paul, you want? Yes. Um, Paul, could you come up to the um, podium? This is Paul Carvey. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's the short notice I just found out from Jeff that the meeting was uh, this afternoon. Uh, uh, I'm petitioning the CDD board uh, to help me remove a tree that is six feet from my lanai. Uh, I have the plot of survey here. Apparently, when they laid out the property back in 1997 or 99, uh, 98. It was not in variance, but the corner of Mile and I sits right on the golf course property. If you recall, about three, I guess it was four years ago, I requested I could put a brick uh, walk in the back so that Jane could get out and uh, see the backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that, but that was partially on the property because of the way the property line goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the 10 years I've been here now, it seems strange to be here for 10 years, I've had to professionally have the tree trimmed. Every single year I have to uh, trim it because it hangs right over my lanai. You know, my concern is if it falls, it's going to take out my entire lanai. So uh, I'm requesting help in uh, you know, taking that tree down, and I'm willing to contribute $1,000 uh, to the golf course to plant new trees, which I think with the planting of the tree across the fairway, the new tree that went in, making that a slight double dogleg, uh, 
those tree or trees could be helped to round out that uh, dog leg there. And then the other thing is I get hit all the time. <laughs> I mean, I get hit all the time. When the wind is from the west, I get three or four hits a day. So, uh, you know, that's my request, and I'm willing to do so. Well, can I see that? Oh, yeah. Um, well, so I, I got your email, and uh, I went out to your house this, uh, this afternoon and looked at it, and I also went back and looked at LIPA. I, from LIPA, assumed that the tree was yours. Yeah, that's what I assumed and until we got the plot of survey when we were going to do the lanai's. Uh, and let's see, where is it at here? Uh, so did you measure this off or anything like no, that? No, no, this is the official plot of, yeah. See, so there's, there's, there's your property line right there in the corner of my lanai is there. Oh, right, and that tree's just a little bit. It's six feet. And if you remember, we requested when I wanted to redo the lanai for Jane, I wanted to come back out toward the golf course. Mm -hmm. But when we had the plot of survey done, realized we couldn't do that because it was your property. But you guys were gracious enough to allow me to extend that little patio for Jane out onto the golf course property. So. Okay. What kind of tree is it? It's a southern oak, unfortunately. Beautiful tree. It is, but it is right over. It is okay. all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've had, it, I've had it professionally trimmed twice. And I have you know, been trimming the branches to keep it off my lanai as much as I can. OK, Paul, yes. Well, I, I told yeah, Paul that I made the suggestion that a, a month or so ago of talking to John, I'd like to get some and we hadn't really put it in, in writing or talked about it. Okay. You know, but this you know, is we all yeah. love Jane, and she would sit out there when the kids were, would come by, wave, and I, I, I wanted to put a tree out there at the end of the path, more towards the golf course anyway. Okay. So to me, this makes sense. We cut that tree down and we put another live oak or southern oak there and just go from there, I, you know, in her honor. Yeah, we've always wanted to put them in the Yeah, yeah. It's a big oak. You know, that's why I'm donating a thousand dollars to the course. You know, that's yeah. kind of my corner. You've noticed that I'm trying to decorate it for the ladies' tea over yeah. there. So thank you. Um, okay. uh, <clears throat> why don't you see what you can do? What the cost would be to do that? Get with Paul. Um, Let's work it out that way. And um, I'll get something pretty quick for us, okay. and we'll figure something out. Because okay. um, there's a possibility that we might be asked to cut down some more trees, some palms on five. Okay. Um, so we can do it as a well, yeah, I received an email about that. Um, so just to you know, keep this consistent, uh, there's two now two palm trees on the uh, back tee of the uh, pro tee. Um, and they're leaning heavily towards their house, and they sent me an email saying that a fawn uh, fell down and went through their cage, and they had to get it repaired. Okay. So from an insurance standpoint, I mean, they, the trees are damaged or diseased, but they are leaning towards it, and you know, it's right in that alleyway when you come across four to five, right there to the right. And if we have a storm? They're already leaning so far that way, they're going to go that way. There's no, yeah. they don't have a choice. I was surprised we survived Irma, but I think that was because that's, uh, that spring, I had that tree professionally trimmed. Wow. Okay. All right, so John, find out what you, you know, when you can do it and get with Paul sure. as far as planting something else. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. That, that's something I'd like to give it to you, but it's something as far as your wife's favorite tree or okay. something, we could, yeah, you I, know. I don't know what to plant, but she loves trees. So, okay. And, you know, and, and she loved to watch the golfers. So. Favorite color, yeah. maybe something that could bloom with her favorite color or something like that, you know. You think about that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Um, John, when we cut these trees down, since they're on our property, do we have, if we cut the two palms and this down, do we have no. to plant, we don't have to no. replant three trees? No. Okay. That's, um, and that's also on the lake banks, okay. more than the actual golf course. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are there any other, um, yes, come up and state your name, please. Okay. My name is uh, Paul McFarland, uh, resident on Mount Bellevue. Um, I haven't really been in touch in terms of because of Zoom and all of this this last year. But the uh, first question for the board is what is the status of the bond payments from the CDD? Okay, the um, homeowner's portion of the bond will be paid off in 23. The golf course portion of the bond will be paid off in 28. Say that again. The, the homeowner's portion will be paid off in 2023. The golf course portion will be paid off in 2028. All oh, right. Actually, 27. Because we have 27. Because we have a year. We have one year reserve. All right. 
And is the, is the plan at that point in time then for the taxes to expire? Well, that, the $325 that's put on the tax bill was for that, right. and the judge approved that. Right. Is our intention to, to keep that on there? No. Okay. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay. Um, John. Yes. John. Um, all right, back to another tree situation. Uh, Mr. Dennis St. John lives on 2150 Sheridan, uh, right there on the corner when you come in to the left. There's a bur small berm beside his house, uh, and there's a, um, a tree on there. I believe it's a shady lady. He'd like to have cut down. Um, it's not encroaching the home, anything like that. He just doesn't like it, and it's kind of interfering with the palm trees. He'd asked Matt to cut it down years back, but Matt said no due to money issues. And I, I kind of told him the same thing. I said, you know, we're under a maybe a you know redesign for the whole community i don't think we're just going to arbitrarily just pick stuff out that you know so um i thought they would be here they said they um, we to. will consider it when we do the landscape review right so remind us to do that but that's, i'm not going to start because if we do for one corner we're going to be doing it all along and, and i want to do it all as one yeah absolutely okay. um so we're going to be closed here uh march 15th um we got a put down an insecticide fit nail app we're also doing a pre-emergent along with Jim Hill is going to come back and finish flushing out the greens. Um, we have basically two greens left or three greens left to find the flush outs on. Um, we had a great day today. Today was our best day we've had doing this whole process as far as locating them. Uh, number 15 and 16, which there's one on 15, three left on 16, and two on the putting green. The two on the putting green, Jim's going to have to bring some radar in and try to find and locate because the, it's been changed back and forth so many times it's really hard to gauge it's such a big area uh, to try to figure out uh, where they could be at but well, we've looked uh, to no avail um, the, the components are in for the sub air that's all sitting there at the shop waiting to be put in as soon as we get done flushing everything out finding these we have to find them to be able to put it in um, so that'll be happening as soon as we get done with that we'll start that process um, this warm weather's done wonders for us everything's headed in the right direction finally um, we're mowing and rolling every day. I heard a lot of comments today that they were fast. Um, last week I heard they were slow. So I think the Primo finally kicked in because last week was the first week in a long time that we put Primo in just because we're trying to get everything growing back and get in that positive direction. Um, John, with the putting green, have you found all the drains on the putting green? No, that's what I was just stating. So okay. there's two, uh, there's one in the back um, towards the towards the gate, the wrought iron gate there, um, that we can't locate. There's one on there we think we can, uh, possibly, but it might be under the pavers. So oh. If it is, it's no big worry, it should be airtight. Um, if it's not, when we go to, once we hook everything up and put everything in, once we go to start pulling air, it'll, you'll start to see a little, maybe a little cave in and we'll know exactly where it'll be at. So, okay. it'll be easy to locate it. Um, that's really all I got for now. And staffing, you're fine? Staffing, we're fine, yeah. Um, we'll probably be adding that, you know, other person here in April or May. Okay. Uh, and then other than that, everything else I got really is in financials, and we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Jeff? Um, one, one update that I, I, on here on the agenda was about the CenturyLink phone service. I've been dealing with Lou Spano from CenturyLink. Um, Lou is uh, working on getting us a deal together. Unfortunately, his mother passed away last Thursday, and uh, he's been out of, hasn't been working. So we're working on it, and you know, uh, potentially uh, moving the phone and internet to CenturyLink, and just keeping the TV with cable, or even maybe even, I don't know, we go on those. Uh, yeah, you know those little deals, you just up on the back of the TV and you get a couple channels. I mean, what, what do we need a bunch of TV in there for anyway? Right. They should be working. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, you know, we've had a really good month in January. We've, we're, we're plotting along here in February, pretty much on plan. I, I think I mentioned to a couple of you guys, we might come up a little bit short in February because I think we budgeted off 29 days last year being a leap year. Okay. So we might come up a little, but I don't know. I, th I think we might get really, really close. 
Uh, beverage concession sales have been uh, amazing the last uh, last couple of weeks. We had a group in, group in from Kentucky on Saturday that spent fourteen hundred dollars basically uh, between sandwiches and beer, and they were you know. Well, I will say that the staff you have there now are real hustlers. Yeah, they're hard workers, and, and surprisingly, they're they're young. I mean, they're. 19, 20 years old kind of gives you hope for the future of America. You know, they're hard workers and they do a good job. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we've, uh, we've we've definitely had an uptick from that. I mean, some of it's because obviously Duffy's being closed. Right. Um, Duffy's uh, hopes to reopen. Uh, John, we're talking about 4:20, uh, so April 20th. April 20th. Huh? Yeah, that's what we're hearing. <laughs> Yes, pretty much. Yeah. And I know that uh, when we met with Andrew DeSalvo, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the, in the remediation stuff, but uh, he was expecting it to be open next week. Yeah, so they're talk you're talking 13 months with no income. From right, and, and we're, we're getting hit on that a little bit in our uh, reviews. Yeah. Amenities, poor, something like you see that sometimes in our review and you know that's just purely they don't people go and they want to go have a burger after golf and they can't have one yeah. um the chicago guys were here as most of you know the group did great certain people at the table made a little bit of extra money that weekend <laughs> you're welcome thank you um they they did donate two thousand dollars towards the tent so we got two thousand dollars that they donated to junior golf which junior golf donated to the club if you look at the miscellaneous line on, on the spreadsheet I gave you, you see the $2,465, $2,000 of it is from the tent. They also um, donated the um, audio system. They all donated an audio system, which is terrific and worked really well. Um, it's a good event. They're great guys. We enjoyed having them. And uh, everybody worked really hard that weekend. It was a, you know, it was, it was a really good weekend. It's too bad we couldn't have given them all Monday off. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, We've struggled a little bit uh, in the past uh, probably four or five weeks with the fact of Ben leaving. It hasn't been, you know, Tyler's a great kid. Uh, Tyler, our new intern, you know, is a terrific kid, but he's a little green to the golf business. And uh, we're trying to get him up to speed. Mm -hmm. Kyle's done a terrific job, and Bobby, of course, as always, has done Bobby. And it's been really good. So it's been a little bit of a struggle at times. Uh, we left the door open Sunday. You know, just little things like that that are just, you know, just getting used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to be coached up. But uh, yeah, other than that, staff's great. I get tons of compliments about the cart guys and, and the starters and rangers. And I, I, I like, to, I see Lloyd in the audience. So I thank those guys for doing a good job okay. keeping things moving. We get good comments on pace of play for the most part. Uh, we had an event a couple Wednesdays ago that pushed us into a, a pretty bad pace of play deal, and we got a couple of reviews on that that weren't great. But uh, that has been the only time this season that we've gone over four hours and 15 minutes in a round. So crossovers work really good, and uh, we're, we're uh, fortunate to be on that, going that way with that. Other than that, I don't have a lot. February's going to go good. I have no reason to think March and April aren't going to be even just as good. And, uh, you know. Please mute your phone. Thank you. And as far as the bricks are concerned, I would like to say something on a personal note. The Ladies Association was that, nice. That, that's, not, uh, that's not me. Okay. So I, I do hear from, I hear background sounds. Okay. No, me either. Okay. Who's ever got on your phone? On your phone, please put it on you. Thank you. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, a few years back when my mom passed in 2019, the, the uh, Ladies Association was nice enough to make her an honorary member and we were able to put a brick out there for her. And it's always nice for me when I walk out to play golf to go give it a little tap and see it. So, And those bricks are important. I think they, they, they give the club history and they, and they remember the folks that are going to be missed, like like Al. Al Smith will be missed, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a very opinionated guy and, and a good guy, and I enjoyed his company. He was the first golf lesson I ever gave really here, so we'll definitely miss him. So that's all I have. Okay. Thank you.
I'm sorry, this is Chris. Jeffrey, you just talking about bricks. It's kind of hard to hear. Yeah, he was talking about um, the bricks and that the, the Ladies League had made his mom an honorary member so that she could have her brick there. And that it's, it's a real history for the club. And that Al Smith will be truly missed. And he was a great golfer. I, uh, I just want to say, because I know earlier I was in the state, but uh, you know, I thought when we started that whole thing, we were pretty much an open or not to anybody, at, any resident that wanted to put a name could. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I don't think so. No, we said that that was strictly for the golfers, and we had suggested that the HOA do something at the community center. And I'll bring it up with um, Bill and Tammy again to see if they can do that. But that was strictly for the golfers. Okay, um, okay Jeff, the pro shop remediation. So we've been working with uh, Andrew DeSalvo and Christine from uh, his uh, management company on the uh, Pro shop remediation. So what happened uh, is, um, you know, there was a major water leak in the in the uh, Duffy's, and that's part of the reason why they've been closed for so long. They completely gutted and redid the building, uh, and they did the up the uh, the uh, insulation, and the ceiling, and all that stuff. So in the process of going through that, they they looked at our ceiling and found some small spots where there had been some water damage over the years and they want to replace that to, to, to a bill of $50,000. And myself and Mike Brino have been working on that with Eileen as well and you know $50,000, I just have $50,000 laying around uh, unbudgeted to repair uh, somebody else's building honestly. So anyway, um, we're working towards that. I know that the, the insurance inspector was in. We, we, uh, Dan was kind enough to go to DeSalvo and say, look, I think your insurance is on the hook for this. I mean, we don't have secondary insurance on the building because we don't own it. We insure the contents. And uh, so they brought in a, an inspector. He went through it the other day. Um, and we're waiting for the report. It said it'd be about a month. Um, and then uh, the air mediation, they want us to get the air quality checked. And we're working on that. Um, but as of right now, you know, I think we're okay uh, with the air quality because it, the, these were very, if you saw the pictures, they're not, it's not huge, I'm talking tiny, tiny little things. And you just, you know, you want to get the ceiling, you want to make it all the same, same. You know, like anyway, if you're doing your house, you want to do the whole thing. I get that, but <coughs> we don't currently have $50,000 to do that with. And we have bigger needs than that. I mean, honestly, we could use a new putting green. I mean, as much hard work as John's putting in to bring it back, we need a new putting green. It's too small. It, it, it's not ever in good shape. It, it just takes a wearing out, especially right there in that front part. And we don't have $50,000 to put into the pro shop, to put into, like, new insulation and a new ceiling. We and just don't have it. Too, Jeff, is we're going to have to be closed for a couple of weeks. Right. It's going to cut into the income as well. Absolutely. So we'd have to go out and work under the tent and go from there. Merchandising and with the. Pull people. everything out, put it in pods. There's going to be cost of cost it renting out. a pod, pulling it out, putting it back. All those things come into play. So, as much as I'd like to go in there and gut it and redo the whole shop and move the counter and do this and that, we just don't have a bunch of money laying around for that. And we have bigger needs. Now, on the flip side of that, one thing as a side note, I did notice the other morning that President Biden has introduced some legislation for more PPP. And I'm wondering from Dan, can you hear me? Dan. I can. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I don't know if you saw that the president put out it's a new plan for PPP. I'm wondering if that will cover municipalities and if we'll be able to uh, get some PPP for the lost revenue from the middle of March till the middle of April of last year. I'm not seeing anything that makes me optimistic about that. Okay. 
Okay. I mean, that would honestly, as much uh, that would be an, an answer to a lot of questions. Not for prayers, us. absolutely. We could do the pro shop and do the putting green with probably the money that we could mm -hmm. collect from that, from the lost revenue we had. Well, Dan, keep researching it, and hopefully something will turn up. <laughs> Yep, I'm trying to stay on top of it as much as I can. Okay. Mike, anything you'd like to add about that? Well, we're looking for his insurance company to cover any costs that we're going to have. Yes, we are. Right. Or hope. Because originally he said that he wasn't he wasn't uh, covered for right. that, even though we paid the premium. Have we had a chance to get his policy to see what but it does cover? Dan. Uh, Dan has it. We called him and talked to him about the lease, but it says that he's the one responsible for that part of it. That's why he sent his um, insurance adjusters and experts and stuff out. So, so we should be good with that. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, if they deny it, you know, then I'll take a really close look at the policy, but it's still done. You know, there's no real reason to. Uh, okay. Was the water damage caused by the leak from the dumpies? No, you couldn't really prove that to be true. The small spots were maybe from a pipe sweating. At one time, the air conditioning ran from like the far side of Duffy's over there by their patio. There's a wall and there's an electric room back there and there were all the air conditioning units were back there. So it ran all the way through Duffy's overhead and into the pro shop. So they think that's probably what happened. But the roof leaked too. And here's where the little rub comes from. He's 100% responsible if it's the roof. That's right. The pipe, mm, mm, tap dancer, Elmer. triple indemnity the lease, potentially we're responsible for it. So kind of like going back and forth with that, but working with his insurance guys, hopefully we'll get something and be able to do what we need to do. Okay. Anything else to Okay, the Landscape Committee. Um, John and Elizabeth and I um, went to the community a couple weeks ago with one of the landscape architects that um, Chuck had given me. Um, the other landscape architect has not gotten back to me. Um, so I'm going to give him a call again tomorrow and see if he can come out. Um, and I'm going to ask a couple of the committee members to go around with John and that other landscape architect. Right now, I can't be on a golf cart. Um, won't be good for the hip. So um, when I get that, um, you know, if you would be willing to to go with the landscape architect. Another um, one? Are we doing a different one this time? Yeah, it would be a different okay. one. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and what I would, one of the things that uh, he was very supportive of was getting those berms, at least lowering the, the shrubbery, doing more ground cover. I had some really good ideas. Um, Strategically you know, pulling out some of the trees. Some of the trees so that when you get to the corner you can really see and it's not like you're fighting with it. And some interesting plant changes. So, um, you know, when I get an appointment with, or when I can get this other landscape architect to come out and talk to us, um, if I can have a couple of the committee members to go with them and, uh, and John, I'd appreciate it. In the meantime, we're still just, you know, we need to hear back from the first one to see what, um, what he's going to show us. But we had looked at some stuff that he had at Pelican Landing, and it really looked, I mean, he took this and really made it nice, and it didn't, you know, you know, it looked really good. So, you know, it's going to be a, a project that I'm hoping we can start during the summer. So, and John's working with them so we know where the sprinkler heads are and what can and can't be done. And Chuck, one of the things that he was saying was that, um, remember how we said we wanted to cut down the cul-de-sacs? Uh, he was saying that there may be pipes and drainage and all under that which could cause a lot more issues. At the surface, you may have a manhole, mm -hmm. stormwater manhole or a wastewater manhole that you yeah. have to work around. But generally, your, your utility pipe work is going to be well below the surface. Okay. And we're talking about surface improvements. So. Okay. And it, it, he seemed to be more worried about the DOT aspect of it. Like, you know, well, all, well, if you take this and make it smaller, then what you you know you you bring in, this all has to be DOT approved and packed in. And I'm just saying, well, it's minimal. I mean, so what? I mean, that's if you're making the lanes wider, you're in a good position. If you're narrowing them, then you might have right. to deal with. But yeah, right. 
And just having that experience doing that kind of work before, I didn't see it. I was like, yeah, it's not really doing anything as far as cars and you know weight bearing and load bearing. And that, that's in LA. That's uh, getting out of his lane and getting into engineering. So yeah. okay. I wouldn't worry too much about that one. Okay. Let's do the. Pretty yeah, I'd still leave that option on the do table. Do pretty pictures, and we'll talk to the engineer about you know, are we able to engineer it or vice versa? We can do it either way. But okay, perfect. Okay, so I will be in touch with the landscape committee with regard to that. Um, the next thing um, is the review of um, potential attorneys. We had the one that you had given us last month, Chuck. Uh, the, the other one uh, ultimately decided he wasn't interested. So okay. Getting really busy right now with all the new development and stuff. So. Yeah. Well, what I, I was going to ask you if you and or Dan could um, give me a list of, and I thought I had it, but I don't, um, the charges that Dan does for different things and um, just to compare it. Right now, we don't have the money to, I mean, this attorney seemed way more pricey. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tony, Tony's been doing this forever in a day. Right. Um, so, and his, his, uh, his specialty is municipal government kind of law, Dan's okay. right there with him, so. Um, okay, now, does he work for any of your other communities? He, he works for a handful of mine. I've worked for him, you know, worked them for, down here 30 years, okay. my entire career, so, okay. as, as well as what Dan, so. Okay. It's, a, it's a rather small group that specialize in CDDs and, and the government law aspects where in the private sector there are a dime a dozen, so. Yeah. Okay. If you could just get that information to me and... Sure. Not, not a problem. I can pull that up and get that out to, to everybody. Okay. Tomorrow. So we so can look have, at that and, and compare it. Yeah, the financial comparison as well, sure. Okay. Yeah, let me remind you of that, uh, you know, a lot of the immediate legal fees they get your uh, balance sheet was because I deferred all golf course payments since August. Oh, right. No, I, I understand that, Dan. So, because you were gracious enough to do that, and I appreciate that. So, that that's not um, that's not an issue. Thank you. So, I just wish you lived a little closer. So, does anybody else have anything with you? No, pretty soon, I'm going to be able to get back to me, and I look forward to seeing you all again. That'll be great. I've already had both my shots, so I'm good to go. Yep, I'm waiting. Okay. They can tell me there. I can be there. I'll be there yesterday. Okay. Thank uh, you. First thing you do, though, before you leave Carabelle is you get a haircut, Dan. Yeah, please. Oh, yeah, I've got to get a haircut. He puts on Jerry Garcia right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing that Crosby and Jeff and John and I, does anybody have anything else about the attorneys at this point? Okay. The other thing that Crosby and um, John and Jeff and I were working on is um, looking at a new payroll company. And we have Diana from ADP here with us today um, that we can ask questions of. And the, one of the reasons is that we're looking to um, save money. Um, and the second reason is that back in December, we had a real issue with trying it where they shut payroll down on a Thursday, which Crosby normally sends it to them on Monday. The staff was supposed to get paid on Thursday and never got paid till the following Tuesday because they never bothered to tell us that they were changing. Crosby had a team, and since COVID, she's been calling and getting not the support that we need for the money we're paying. Um, and then, what was it, two weeks ago? Because of the storms, the payrolls come out of Memphis. And um, again, the staff was delayed in getting their pay. Um, I can't afford for these guys, for the most part, to have to wait because they get paid, they, they work week to week. Um, and I'm still trying to work with China because some of the staff was charged late fees and overdraft fees because payroll wasn't done. So um, I'm working on that. But in the interim, we have worked with, uh, talked to ADP. Um, Crosby, you have the, <coughs> Crosby has the paperwork to show that with ADP, um, and Diane, I'm gonna ask you to jump in here at some point. Yeah. Um, and actually, Diana, um, did you wanna yeah, go up at the podium, <laughs> that would help? Okay. With, current with Trinet, she has the, um, the wages, the benefits, 
and what the cost of the benefits would be. Um, she, they've gone and compared it with um, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, which um, the Florida Blue, which the staff already has. And looking at it quickly, the um, the admin fees would not be that different, but the actual cost of the benefits could save us um, close to fifty thousand dollars. So, um, Crosby, do you have anything else to say before Diana? Okay. Okay. Thank you. This is Diane from ADP. Hi, everybody. I also have Alex and Scott um, dialing in. So they're on the total source side for questions for the middle column. Um, so yes, I think Eileen did a very good job of um, summarizing what's been happening with the current vendor, which is they changed their support model. So it would be like they unmanned the pro shop, basically. Right. And people would just go in and pay for things on the road. So it, it's a little bit chaotic when you depend on them for information like HR issues and also timeliness for payroll questions and issues around payroll being delivered. So um, we presented two different models. One is a like-to-like -like with the current Trinet vendor, which is a PEO, and then ADP Total Source. And we also shopped open market under the ADP Comp Services model. So both of these solutions have a dedicated team for Crosby and John, Jeff, Eileen to reach out to, and we have never changed that in the entire existence of these two models because that's why you pay for a solution to support you when you don't have in-house HR, in-house payroll specialists, right? So um, we, we presented options with United and Aetna on total source, and we also presented Blue Cross Blue Shield, which is what the employees have today on the open market. Um, there were some initial savings on the comp services column. There are some savings on the admin, and there's also some savings in the workers' comp with a potential dividend program. I'm not licensed to speak to the workers' comp, but we can have more conversations. It can be up to 9% of the premium if you guys stay safe.